so I did a, a, another gig and uh, sorted out some more sounds. And as I always do, I try to um, then share the result of patch and I put it on my line six community page. I'm actually thinking of moving some of that stuff into a package where, you know, something like Dropbox where people can access it. Cause I feel that I always want to tweak, tweak the sound so that like, I think I will do that in the near future. So, uh, this particular gig uh, was a, a modern jazz gig where I play some originals and some um, some standards and some stuff. So the, the reference is roughly like a Rosa Winkle, anything from like Pat Metheny forwards in time, so to speak. So where uh, guitars we start using effects. Uh, so I have uh, I use the amp for this gig. So the um, the amp is just for reference. Uh, the, the the amp block. So. Um, I have a few overdrive pedals, but I didn't use them in the gig, so I switched off the effects loop, which uh, all the other pedals are in. So the first block is just the compressor. To even things out a bit. Uh, the other block, I have two reverbs. One's a short reverb. The other one is the same reverb, but with a longer tail. I find that in like ballad -y stuff, that works best. Then I have a delay, which is a, a tap tempo, the usual quarter note tap tempo. Okay, and it's quite low in the mix, so it just wants to be a halo, basically. Uh, another delay, which is, uh, again, the, the hold delay, is a tiny delay with that infinite hold, basically. Uh, it's slightly different from the other ones that I've, uh, uh, I've had in the past in these patches, so I wanted something that was a bit more subtle, so to speak, rather than just a big effect. And then I, I, I had a chorus, because I had a couple of tunes that were a bit more, let's, let's call them like 80s sounding, so to speak, you know, the, the Michael Brecker, Mike Stern type thing. Okay. So that's that. Um, so I just wanted to share actually just a couple of tips that, um, I've used them in the past, but I think they're becoming, with all the modeling stuff and playing with the ears and amps, uh, have become more obvious nowadays. So the first thing is that nowadays, especially if you use modelers, because obviously having the same patches at the, at the same, at even levels, so to speak, is very important. I think beginners at the very beginning tend to have, the beginners at the very beginning, beginners tend to have uh, an issue when they start doing gigs where the levels of different sounds are all over the place, where you want to have, for, for, you know, for not to drive the sound engineer mad, you know, patches that are the same level. So the clean sound, when you switch them over drive, it's roughly the same, the same EQ. Uh, but even more so now, I find that you have to, because you plug in now into different systems with different impedance, with different, you know, with different, uh, fields to speak. You might plug it into an amp one day, another amp another day, maybe a rental. You might plug it into the front of house or a smaller PA. And uh, uh, I, I find that more and more there is a need to like do some mastering in a way. You know, like when you master an album, I don't know if you're technical about the kind of, this kind of stuff, what they do, they, they tend to take all the various mixes of different tunes uh, that, that will make up the album and then they try to make them all the same in terms of volume and and equalization so that you don't have to always reach for that volume knob in, in, the, in the system. Uh, and this is kind of the same thing for, uh, for modelers. I feel that because you're plugging always in different systems, uh, there is a need to master the, the patches, so to speak, so that all the, the sounds sound the same in different systems, so to speak. I don't know if it's just me. Um, I, I tend to tap quite a bit. I tend to play different styles. I love doing it. That's, that's what you know keeps me going, so to speak. Uh, and I find that I really find that plugging into different systems sounds might be different. Especially uh, watch out for a, a couple of things like different apps. In ear apps, they tend to have presets of equalization that maybe the previous musician has used. Uh, so make sure that you get rid of all of that, which has just happened a couple of weeks ago. The sound was completely different to the sounds that I made in the, you know, in the in the unit. So maybe try and there are two things that I always do. The first one is to to plug the, plug the guitar straight into the amp 
without this, the effects and make a sound first, just the, the, the organic sound of the guitar into the amp. And then I will put the effects between the guitar and the amp and see how much the sound changes. And second, I try to, um, when I, um, if I, if I use in-ears, I want to try and plug the in-ears straight, if you can, if there's an out, uh, uh, headphones out into my modeler and then uh, get, compare it to the front of house, what I get through the front of house, uh, you know, the in-ear box, so to speak, either wide or wireless. So uh, that's a good way to not go crazy if you have in-ears. Sometimes, actually, the sound engineer, engineer will have uh, a preset that is made where, let's say, it's removed a lot of the bass from the guitar and stuff like that. So you get an idea of what's your sound, and then and then you compare it to what you're getting from front of house, so to speak, uh, by plugging the in-ears straight or a set of headphones straight into the modeler. So that's I would call that mastering in. Uh, so making sure that your system sounds good and your effects sound good, like the deal is not too prominent, stuff like that. If you plug in, plug into a small speaker, into different sets of headphones, big speakers, into an amp. So do, like you're checking your mix, so to speak, to make sure that everything is always, it always sounds consistent. The second thing is about delays. Uh, another trick about delays, I've made a video about delays a while back, so I'll post it. In a link, I'll post, post the link. You know the the, the dealers that I use, and there's a patch of more, most of the dealers that I use uh, on the Line Six community page, and uh, I will link to that in a comment or in a pinned comment. And uh, the trick is that dealers are not all built the same. Uh, not only there are different types. You know, you can have a tape delay, an analog delay, a digital delay, which is more true to you know the, the sound that you're playing is. Uh, uh, while a tape dealer might have more saturation, it loses it loses quality as the repeats happen, so to speak. Um, so there are different style deals, but what I'm talking about here is not just that; it's that delays fulfill different needs. Let's say a, a U2 style DH style delay is very different from, let's say, the delay that I use today. And the way of doing that is not just within the mix, like getting obviously a U2 style, you want to have it featured, you want to have it at the same level as as the guitar sound, because the guitar level, where a, uh, a more halo wants to be really low, so the mix will be between 50, like 10 and 20%, where the, the, the edge style will be 50% and up, okay? So, but another thing is that the edge style delay will have the same equalization, if not more, like you might add more treble to the sound. And in the uh, the Helix, I hope you will be able to see this. If I go on to, let's say, my delay here, which is the digital delay, you see that there's uh, the time, the feedback, and then I have bass, treble, and mix. Those are the three ones that I, that I want to use. And in this case, uh, I want to have, I want to have the delay, let me actually remove, turn off all the, the reverb. So you can only hear the delay. You hear it not only is much lower in the mix, but it's a lot darker. So I want to thin out the delay if I want to have it just as a halo, so to speak. So the, the way to do that, I remove bass. Let's say I want it to have it about 20% or so. Um, treble, I want to have it even below 20%. You see the mix is about 23%. And uh, again, the feedback, that doesn't really matter. Sometimes sometimes I really want to have even more feedback because obviously the now the, the delay is quite dark. You know? So I want to be able to hear it. Okay. So obviously then if there are key changes, remember if there are key changes in the music, that becomes a bit of a you know, problematic thing because you have, you might be playing in the key of C and then there's a chord underneath that might not be, you know. So you have a few notes that are technically wrong, so to speak. So be aware of that when you've said the feedback. But that's the trick. So another another delay trick is to EQ the delay. 
depending if you want to have it featured, in which case you will have the same level as the guitar, as the instrument, and then the same equalization. So you, you will have uh, the mix of 50% and the bass and treble exactly the same as the guitar. If no, sometimes you want to have the treble uh, a bit, you know, feature the treble, so to speak, and take and remove some of the bass, so to speak. Uh, where in this kind of halo delay, to me, it sounds best when the delay is a bit darker and thinner. So you want to remove a lot of the treble so that it stays out of the way. I realize actually I've seen somebody posted a uh, recording, actually peeing those as well, of the jazz set and uh, another gig that I did a while ago. I think I posted the patch of that, um, uh, of a funk gig that I did a while ago. And I realized after hearing that, that the delay was too, the mix was too loud. I should have kept the mix or the treble a bit lower down. So it's always, you know, a, a, a basically like hearing and and tweaking. You know, there's this whole there's this whole story of just improving one percent. So if you keep tweaking and improving the sound by one percent over a year, that sound is going to be much, much, much better. So it's not uh, it's not starting with a finished product. It never happens that way. So yeah, I hope this was uh, of value. And as always, uh, if you find these videos of value to you, please consider sharing them to, um, to friends or through social media. And uh, as always, like, subscribe, that really helps the channel. And if you feel like checking out the links in the description, that would be very appreciated because uh, on in my website, there are things for, for sale and, and, and all that. And um, yeah, that's great. Take it easy. Bye-bye.